From childhood, we always have dreams. Uh, the dreams sometimes are realized, sometimes are not. But I think it's very important to have dreams and then try uh, to work hard towards, towards it. I was born in a very middle class, typical middle class Bengali family, but I was very fortunate to have parents who are liberal and very progressive. My father wanted us, his three daughters, to be scientists. And in the school, I thought I will study physics because that was my favorite subject. But when I came here in Jadavpur University, to appear for the interview, one of the professors asked me, what do you like most? So I said, I like to travel most. So he, he said, then why are you studying physics? Then you should study geology. That time I had a very vague idea about geology. But he said that if you choose geology, you will be traveling all your life, all over the world. So I didn't hesitate. I just cross over physics and I wrote geology. The principal, then we had principal, he said that this is final. You can't come back and uh, then again ask to change back to physics because your seat will be given up. But I said, let me try for a year. But it was a good decision. For me, it was a very good decision because I enjoyed geology for the rest of my life. Geology, what is geology? Geology is the study of rocks, how they are developed, and then it involves rigorous fieldwork. In those days, very few girls used to take up geology. I'm talking about 60 years ago. And very few universities also allowed geology. But fortunately, Jadapur University allowed girls to study geology, and I was the uh, one of the earliest, earliest batch of uh, geology in Jadapur University. Uh, at the same time, uh, I took up mountaineering as a hobby. My parents didn't object as long as it did not affect my study. So I had to really study hard uh, and I proved myself, I talked uh, both BSc and MSc examinations, but at the same time, I continued to study, uh, to do mountaineering. In 1953, my father was posted in Nepal, and I, as a little girl, met Tenzing and Hillary after their epic climb of Everest. I was really fortunate. And years after, I, at the Himalayan Mountaineering Institute, I had the opportunity to take training from Tenzing himself. And I was also a member of the first all-woman expedition from Bengal. 19, in 1967, it was Ronti, and in 1970, it was Loluna. After the, after the MSc, I took up structural geology as my topic. Then field work, I had, that time I had to do field work all alone because so far the field work was done in group. But as a PhD student, you have to do it alone. And it was fun because I could use my mountaineering with, uh, not, so not, not only studying rocks, I was climbing them also. Sometimes it was very, very hard for a girl to be a geologist because especially in those days there were hardly any uh, transport, there are hardly any roads. We have to really walk long distances and then came back long distances with the rucksack full of rocks. But I enjoyed it and I always loved it. So after doctoral work, I applied to go abroad. I joined Geological Survey of India, but while uh, doing the job in GSI, I saw an advertisement of the Royal Commission for the exhibition of 1851. That time it was a very prestigious, also today, it was a very prestigious scholarship. And 
what happened so far the scholarships are only offered to brilliant students of physics uh, but i just took a chance i applied and for, and then i there were series of ex, uh, interviews and i really didn't hope to get it because all the other candidates are much more brilliant than me but somehow i was selected after series of six interviews and went to imperial college to do my postdoctoral studies and that opened a new world to me i could meet all the experts of the world of my subject and walk in different terrains in uh, spain in scottish islands and that led led to me uh, led me to take up in the international geological uh, geodynamics project and i went to uppsala university in sweden for another 3 years field work in these remote places was interesting it was tough it was very very tough especially for a indian girl and it was not common in those days to see an indian girl moving around in remote places uh, with a hammer and a rucksack full of rocks but somehow i managed i walked really hard and enjoyed the field work as well as research work over there so i was lucky to go to the scottish highlands to different places in scandinavian caledonites in sweden i had the opportunity to work as a summer geologist uh, in the swedish geological survey of india i was the only woman and only foreigner in that group of 11 geologist and we had to stay in tents in remote areas in north sweden and spend 3 months over there it was away from the locality and we were dropped uh, by helicopters there and stay in tents on our own so we had many adventures many hazardous days but somehow i managed it was mentally really challenging and physically strain was but i survived and uh, did my work successfully perhaps all these experiences helped me to be selected for the antarctic expedition later on later i had the opportunity to walk uh, many geologically important areas remote areas in different parts of the world whether it is helvetic alps or pyrenees in spain or china i i am i am really grateful to choose geology to have this opportunity to work in these remote places and have these experiences after my post doctoral uh i came back to india and joined geological survey of india but i was not happy there i feel restricted and there was no challenge so in spite of the advice of many well wishers i left i resigned from geological survey of india and joined jadavpur university as a lecturer at a much lower salary but i felt free and it was the desired world i really enjoyed teaching and the research of the academic world and it opened another door to me in 1981 india went to antarctica and it was the first expe- scientific expedition to antarctica so i took another chance i applied to be a member of the antarctic expedition but i was refused because i am a woman so next year i was disappointed of course i was very dif- disappointed but next year i got a telegram from department of ocean development for an interview and the interview i was selected sent for medical uh, tests 
uh, passed that test and was sent to Machoi Glacier near Kargil for training. So we were 30 scientists for this mountaineer short, two weeks mountaineering training. I was the only one who had, who is a trained mountaineer. All the other scientists never seen mountain before. So it was sometimes the trainers asked me to join them instead of training me. So that, that was also a rare experience. Antarctica for a scientist is a very important place because it is the only polar continent. For a geologist, it's the key, key piece of Gondwana land. And for a biologist, the fauna and flora are endemic, never found anywhere in the world. For an upper atmosphere scientist, that upper atmosphere is only place where they can, can study aurora because the Arctic is a sea, it's not a continent. And in the polar region only the magnetic lines of force are perpendicular, so they can observe lot, many unusual pheno, phenomena in that, in that area. For a weather scientist, Antarctica control the world of weather. So for any scientist going to Antarctica, is a rare opportunity and again it was a different, different world. After this roaring 40s and furious 50s, when we entered the pack ice, it was indeed a, an experience to feel because the ship was passing through pack ice in the horizon, we could see icebergs. Then we see albatrosses in the sky. And gradually, we arrived in near the real continent where the real icebergs are floating. Sometimes they are eroded. Sometimes, when it's close to the continent, they are freshly detached from the mother ice sheet. Antarctica is covered by uh, four kilometer thick sheets of ice. 98% of the continent is covered by that. Only 2% are exposed as a, as a rock. So when we arrived there, it was uh, as if we arrived in a different planet vast expanse of white ice against the blue sky. There are only two colors, blue and white. Then some penguins here and there. Another experience is that silence. We are never experienced to that kind of silence. Not only that, we are never experienced to that kind of uh, Oh, transparency of the atmosphere. You can see miles after miles in Antarctica because the air is so clear in a good weather day. And of course, there are penguins, the little Adelie penguins, they are very curious and they come close to you if you don't disturb them. And majestic emperor penguins and they don't like people to come close to them. They, they are very slow and uh, very aloof at the intrusion of human being. So this is uh, our picture where the penguins are really unafraid of human being because they never been in touch of the human being. Then there are Antarctic seals a great many variety of the seals and they are very special from the northern seals because they spend most of their time under the water and uh, because the temperature of the water is much warmer than the outside temperature. The outside temperature may be uh, minus 30 or 40 degrees whereas the water temperature is only minus 1.8. Uh, there are many varieties of seals like uh, Weddell seals, Crabital seals, Ross seals, and Leopard seals. There are whales, some 
fishes which are so special that they don't have red blood in their body. They don't have hemoglobin in their blood because uh, the Antarctic water is so rich in oxygen, they don't need hemoglobin. And they have the special uh, property to remain alive in the ice. But for a geologist, the main challenge is to walk somewhere where nobody has walked before. So for me, it was an exciting, exciting area. And uh, for we, we stayed there for two months and we walked 12 hours a day against fiercest winds and sub-zero temperature. But the thrill of working in a new place was so much that we didn't care. Especially exhausting was end of the day after 12 hours of walking. We have to come long distances full of rocks, sometimes really as heavy as 30 kilograms. Because you don't leave a chance uh, to leave a rock speci specimen in case you don't able to come back again. Next, uh, next time, when I went there, as a, uh, in 1989-90, we had an accident. At the beginning of the accident, my three geologist colleagues died. And it was a traumatic experience for me. But uh, I had to work alone. I had to finish the job. So I did work alone which is against the rule in Antarctica, but I didn't have any choice. So I walked alone for the next two months and completed my job over there. Oh, I don't know. Next slide, please. When I went to Antarctica, it was a beautiful, beautiful area. I was fascinated by its beauty. But when I get the news of Antarctica these days, I get really upset because the pollution reached Antarctica. Not only the increased research stations or tourist, uh, tourist uh, uh, development over there, but the pollution of the northern hemisphere reached there. Chunks of ice box are uh, detaching for the mother ice sheet. Then uh, the glaciers are retreating. There is increase of temperature uh, of Antarctica for in the last 50 years, I think 3 degrees Celsius in 50 years. And the most worrying thing that we find uh, chemicals in the seals and penguins over there. Lots of penguins rookeries are destroyed. So it is our duty for all of us to really worry about the and do something about it. Because uh, this global warming is affecting polar region fast because it's a cold place. But it's going to affect the whole world. If the, water, if the ice melts, all of our coastal region will be submerged. So we have to do something, otherwise we'll be answerable to our future generation.